F is for fears. Hi, I'm Beck from Be Free Emotional Fitness Training, and I support women and girls to become emotionally stronger. And I'm Vern from Move Forward Mentoring, and I specialize in male mentoring, helping boys and men find their passion, speak from their heart, and build better relationships. And together we are Rekindling Relationships. We work with couples through mentoring sessions, as well as facilitating communication and creative workshops to build deeper connections. Welcome to our podcast designed to help you strengthen and bring more fun into your partnership, as well as create a more loving, healthy and strong connection. Hi everyone. Hi there. Today we're going to have a look at fears. We're going to have a look at uh, the biggest fears people have in relationships. Where did these stem from and how can we overcome them? It's a really important conversation to have in relationships because I feel it's something we all have. We all have fears and when we get into an intimate relationship, especially one that we really want to be in, we really want to be with that person, then that's when those fears actually come up. We might not even notice them when we're hanging out with people who are like, oh yeah, this is okay, whatever. But as soon as someone like, oh, I really like this person, I really want to get to know them, then that's going to bring up all of those fears which probably stem from our childhood, those relationships we have with our parents and our siblings and our past experience, they all come up again when we get into an intimate relationship. One that we truly value. It's true. And if we don't get on top of them, we will unknowingly sabotage the relationship. What are some of the biggest fears that people have in relationships? I think there's quite a lot. We've talked about our own fears together. You do a quick search, you'll find these. The fear of rejection, I think is a huge one. The fear of being judged, um, fear of being abandoned, the fear of the other person being unfaithful, the fear of your needs being ignored, fear of a lack of control in the relationship, fear of failure, I think is a big one. Do you have any more? Sometimes people worry about the fear of boredom or the relationship going stale. And I think just even the fear of commitment, like really diving in deep, like Mm. actually going really deep because we know that when we go deep, that stuff's going to come up. And that's challenging. I mean, the positive side is there's a lot of self-growth in going deep, but it does bring up all your fears. And you sort of got to want to grow as well. Mm. Like if you don't want to grow then a relationship is a really good way to either poke you into growing, doing the personal growth, or just sabotaging the relationship and running away and trying to get away from it all. Which you see two people in and out, in and out, in and out of relationships. Yeah, Yeah. I've seen that quite common, seen that Mm. with friends. You know, most of these fears do stem from past experiences and our own beliefs really, isn't it? Mm. So Beck, we all have these fears, but when these fears come up in a relationship, what happens for people? One of the main ones that people worry about is fear of being left. And that's probably due to not having a close emotional or physical relationship with a caregiver. Yeah, yeah, that's where that would have stemmed from. The way people act is that they tend to act clingy. They start arguments, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, to test the relationship. They get involved with people who are unavailable in some way. That's interesting. I think I've been there myself. (laughs) Yeah, and they avoid relationships completely because they don't want to be abandoned. If you worry about the fact that this person can leave you, then you should leave first. That's right. What's another reaction? So the fear of being hurt might be that they grew up in an environment which they didn't trust people that were close to them. So they might have they come didn't from feel an, safe. They, they might have come from an abusive. Yeah, family. that's right. And so they will tend to act hyper vigilant and constantly on guard and looking for signs of betrayal or abuse. So they're looking all the time, and that does that show up in like maybe a neediness? Well, they'll tend to be very suspicious. Like a kind gesture, they will suspect that there's ulterior motive to it. So they're always looking for a reason behind something that happens to them. That's right. So they're yeah. sort of looking for the negative all the time. And that, Yeah, that's right. And they'll avoid um, sharing their vulnerabilities with others because the fear that that person might hold it against them at a later date. Oh, that's huge because if you don't feel like you can actually share how you feel, then how do you actually get over that? That's a tricky one. Another big one is fear of not being good enough. The fear of being unworthy. That's huge. Yeah, many people struggle with feeling unworthy or they're defective in some way or unlovable. Yeah, there's something wrong with them because we always look internally. We don't look at the fact that everyone probably feels like this. Mm. We look internally as, oh, you know, I'm not that great. And, you know, it's that inner voice, isn't it? We're not a good person. And why would anyone love us? Why would they do that? 
And people that have that inner voice, that unhealthy kind of dialogue, tend to coincidentally pursue people who are critical of them. Because then they're getting that need met. They're validating their yeah. inner voice, aren't yeah. they? And they tend to be quite critical of others and they hide their true self and they have difficulty hearing criticism. But hang on, they're, they're with someone who's critical, but they can also have difficulty hearing that as well. Mm. That's interesting. Yep, go on. And they compare themselves unfavorably. Yeah, with people others. who put themselves down all the time. And we hear that a lot. Like yeah. people who are constantly putting themselves down. I always feel that people who are super critical about themselves can be super critical about other people. And if someone is being really critical and you see this person who's constantly being negative about other people, I think, wow, imagine how badly they must treat themselves. What are they saying to themselves? Because they're saying this to other people. Their inner talk must be horrible. Very unhealthy inner talk. So how do we overcome these fears? I think to overcome these fears, we've got to recognise that we have them first. You know, there's an acknowledgement, this is going on for me, name it. To be able to tell our partner that we've got these fears going on. And that's being vulnerable. That can be really tricky. If your partner is telling you that they have a fear, you might be triggered by that and be like, oh, they don't love me anymore or this is to do with me. And rather than making it personal to realise this is my partner's experience and I want to be able to support them in that. That's right. And no one is very good at doing this because it goes against all all our lifelong patterns that we're taught, which is to suppress any fears, pretend they're not there, don't even acknowledge them and push them away. I was thinking because we have a blended family of four kids, we have two teens and two tweens. I don't ever remember my parents ever talking about their fears, but I feel if they were able to speak about their fears openly in front of us, then it wouldn't make it so bad. So maybe we need to be able to speak in front of our own children about our fears, what we have, so they realise that firstly, there's nothing wrong with them. We've all got them. We all have them. We all have them. And that speaking about them and being vulnerable about them is actually a strength. That is such a good point. And I will go to an example of your eldest daughter who is actually awesome at talking about things. And she loves this arrangement that we have as a family. And quite often she will need reassurance that it's not going to change. So yeah. like, she because she loves it so much, she wants us to always be together. Yeah, well, she thinks you're awesome. She's only human. <laughs> Oh, go on. <laughs> she is only human. Everyone, everybody loves well, Beck. It's true. actually hilarious how everybody loves you. I can be a bit grumpy and a bit like, oh, don't talk to dad right now. He's in a mood or, or something going on. But you are always open for a chat and a laugh. And they're like, run to you. Oh. Tell, tell Beck everything. <laughs> I'm okay with that sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good. They're taking up all your your your, your attention. I'm going. I'm going to go in the shed. I'm going to go and fix something or make something. The in-house counselor. <laughs> Yeah, the point I think I was with that is that she is so good at voicing her fears. And sometimes I think as a partner, we might have heard these fears a few times. So you might want to say, haven't we got over this? You know, no, you don't need reassuring again. And haven't you moved on from this? And I think we have to be careful to allow the partner to keep expressing them because it's what's happening to them, not us. So I think it's just being patient and support them to move through it. And then eventually those fears will just disperse. But it might not happen straight away. I think is it might take a few times and things will trigger them and it will come up for them again. And so it's good to let them process it. Yeah, it might take a few sessions of processing it. Yeah, being patient with it, probably I think I'd find that the hardest because I do feel sometimes like, haven't we talked about this? This is not something which is, gets cleared up with one conversation. No. A fear which you've had since you were little does not just go away after a conversation. But if consistently it's held and it's listened to, then there's an opportunity for it to be let go of, I think. That's right. And if we don't, and if we avoid these or minimise them or squash the other person's fear, that'll just end up in a bigger mess later on down the track. Yeah. It's that sort of, you know, why don't you just relax, just 
don't worry about it. And what happens then, it's like the partner's trying to suppress it. You know, they yeah. don't want to hear it, so they want to suppress yeah. it. And that's not going to work either because it will come back all yeah. the time. And it's like getting fit. It's not going to happen overnight. You don't just go to the gym once and you're fit. You know, it takes a few sessions, a good few sessions and time and patience. If you know your partner's expressing something which is really vulnerable for them and you're able to just sit there and accept it as your partner's fear and not take it on board like not make it personal that will help from triggering your own fears about that because that can happen can't it where somebody might say a fear for example they might say i'm bored and then that might trigger yeah i might think i'm not think i'm interesting enough because of that where it's actually not about that it's actually the partner saying i'm bored and i want us both to come to an agreement or a way to make this more interesting for both of us exactly and a good point too that to be aware that it can actually trigger your own fears yeah. And you don't want mm. to actually then be in your fear and then completely take over the conversation from your partners you know, who was trying to express something. Once that person's spoken, is oh, your fear has actually brought up this in me. Mm. And then I can speak to that because then that partner then is like, you've held me, now mm. I'll hold you. Mm. We'll hold space for each other. That's right. And like you said, that's a classic example the boredom one because it's most likely that partner actually wants to go out and have more date nights. They don't want to be without you. Mm. They want you included. Yep. They want to do more fun together. And focusing on the fear and not going off on a tangent, when they're talking about finances, I feel like the, I don't have enough control over this is not saying, it's not like going off and then going, well, you shouldn't be spending all your money on your car. Then all of a sudden it becomes a shame and blame. That doesn't sort anything out. It's that this is my fear. How do we come up with some real practical ways to deal with it together? So we did try this process Mm, haven't yeah. we yeah we did that would you like to talk to how that went for you <laughs> I, I feel like this is a little bit triggering for you that you're a little bit worried about actually voicing your fear into the into the in internets big wide world <laughs> big wide world we did sit down and have a talk it was quite lovely because you had a headache so I was, I'll just give you a head massage you could talk about your fears and doing it that way was good because you were sort of fa we we're both facing away from each other so we weren't facing towards each other like we normally would no one's looking at us yeah. so that can open things up a bit I think that works really well for some people who are not very used to speaking face to face or eye to eye there's less pressure it's pressure. So I was giving you a neck massage and a head massage. I highly I, recommend that. Because I'm awesome. He's and <laughs> very good at neck and head massages. And, and then um, and we only spoke for about probably 20 minutes. So we kept it really short. I think that's important is to name it and then move on. Mm. We'll get caught up in this long conversation. Mm. But you spoke to me about your fears and then I spoke about my fears. We also swapped so I got a fantastic head massage too one of my fears is one that we've already explained which is that fear of abandonment so when I was little my parents separated and I didn't actually have my dad in my life at all for quite a number of years and then growing up I've had a few relationships which have broken up with my partner who was a woman saying I'm done I'm walking away so I do have this fear of being left being alone coming to the end of my life and all of a sudden I'm alone there and there's nobody with me that every single person is going to just get sick of me or bored with me or annoyed with me and just walk away and that's something that's come up for us in that that's how I'll feel and you'll you know we'll have a conversation and you might walk away from the conversation and I feel like you've left for good and so I start to panic and I start getting this anxiety of this fear of abandonment but being able to speak to it it just gets held you don't try and make me feel better you just allow me to express it means that I don't feel like I have to worry about it so much and I know that if it comes up for me again I can talk to you about it because we've already had this conversation I can say oh my fear of abandonment's coming up again and this is what's happening for me help me to actually maybe move through this so I don't have to worry about it anymore there's a power in you telling me when it's happening to you you feel you're feeling those feelings because there's often a behavior that manifests from the thought pattern and so it helps me to understand the behaviors there what's happening for you and you can feel it anyway between each other you can feel that disconnection it's so good to put words to the fears 
and it just helps us work it out together in a healthy way without letting that behavior get out of control and then me wondering what the hell's going on which can happen with any of the fears and when we when we learn to recognize how our partner behaves and reacts to certain situations or conversations then we know them better we have a deeper understanding of them so we can see when something does come up we might be able to say hey are you feeling a bit challenged and triggered right now was it because of this or can you tell me about it we can reach out to them so rather than turning away from them because we're like oh they're having emotions we can turn towards them and say i can see that things aren't great for you at the moment please talk with me about them let's sit down for a little bit and have a chat and actually it wasn't that any of these had come up obviously for us that day or that week or whatever but it was actually just a good process to do together to make our relationship stronger because everyone has them but it's an interesting process just to go okay for half an hour let's talk about our fears and see if we can move through them and we understand each other a bit deeper because you brought up things in that story that I didn't know about your relationship with your dad so that was really interesting too so it gave me more insight into your background growing up and we the reason we did it was because we were researching for this podcast podcast f is for fears and then you asked me whether we could actually talk about our own fears together and so we set out a time when we could sit down and do that there was no distractions and we were in a good space we could talk about how we are when we are challenged but do it when we're just calm and i think that's a real key to learning about each other is not this stuff coming up in the heat of an argument or something that's triggered something that's triggered or emotional stuff i think the worst thing for a relationship is trying to have a conversation about the relationship when everyone's all over the place heightened when everyone's heightened good so work. true yeah that that's a really good tip so sometimes it's good to take that space and address them when when the relationship is calm do you want to tell us your fears pretty not funny. really okay it's, it's the really end funny. now it's, it's, thanks for listening <laughs> it's really funny because i've actually been noticing how the conversation's gone off on discussing the fears rather than actually going into that fear i'm doing the stereotypical trying to avoid them don't talk it's about the british it, in it me. won't happen it's the british in you <laughs> stick up a lip pretend it's not happening so my fear is the fear of the person being unfaithful, so being cheated on, and that stems from an old story, and which it always is an old story, of a relationship that I was in for a long, long time and not feeling like I knew the whole person and they had a lie or a secret and so it made me feel like I didn't know them entirely. And I think too that it's come up for me in this relationship as a trigger because it took us a while to get into a committed relationship because you had the fear of abandonment so not had solid relationships. I was polyamorous and I did not want to be in a relationship because the last relationship I was in smashed me and I was so scared that I was going to get smashed again. Yeah so that made me concerned that you would want to go down that path again you get bored with being in a committed relationship and you you would look for excitement in my head is what I thought you know of being with many people and so that has come up as a trigger for me so we discussed my fear of unfaithfulness and I've been able to express to you how the reasons why I was in that space and how that has changed for me now and I only want to be with you mm. Only wanna be, be with, with you. <laughs> and the good thing is, actually, um, there would be a lot of people with your fear out there. Yes, I could tell for a fair while that I knew you loved me, but there wasn't that solid commitment. Since we've been talking through it, my fear, your fear, and overcoming them, I'm feeling this much more solid commitment. And you can sense that, which then makes me dive further in, and you dive further in because you feel safe. And me knowing your fears helps me. To to understand how you might act or react in a certain situation and then do what I can to make you feel better is to actually try and allay those fears by being really clear in my intentions and what I do and how I act. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you got a lot out of this. Please take some time with your partners to sit down and have a conversation about fears and what you have and allow yourself to be authentic and be vulnerable because it will help your relationship and it helps your own personal growth. Being in a relationship for me personally has helped me grow so much because I'm allowing myself to let go of my old fears and let go of my old stories and create a new story. So face your fears. Face your fears. <laughs> and tune in next time for... G is for goals. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe and follow us. 
and check out our website at rekindlingrelationships.com. Bye for now. See ya.